Is the Umidigi Power a good phone to buy? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out. Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, coming at you with my review video of the new Umidigi Power. Follow me on Instagram at KevinBreezeTV. Please join the Kevin Breeze tech community on Facebook to chat about budget smartphones, ask questions, and help others. Now I would like to thank Umidigi for being kind enough to send this out to me to review on the channel. I just want to let you know that this is a completely unbiased review and that's how Umidigi wanted me to do it. So I appreciate that and I hope you can learn a lot about the device in this video. Now the Umidigi Power is available at $139.99 at the time of me making this video. The price might have changed since then, so definitely make sure to take a look at the link in the video description to see the latest pricing for the phone. Now this device is available GSM unlocked, which means that in the US, you're pretty much going to be able to use this with any GSM carrier. So it's going to work with AT&T, T-Mobile, Metro by T-Mobile, Cricket, and some others. Now on Umidigi's Amazon listing, they claim that the phone will not work with Verizon or Sprint. However, based on where you live, you might be able to get Verizon to work with the phone, but you're not going to get as much Verizon coverage as you will with other carriers like AT&T and T-Mobile. So keep that in mind. And as far as Sprint goes, I have no idea. I don't have a Sprint SIM, I wasn't able to try it out. But if you have a Sprint, don't get this phone. Get something else. Now I've been using this phone with Cricut Wireless, and in a little bit I'm going to be doing a speed test to show you the kind of speeds that I've been getting with it on Cricut but overall, it's been performing really well on that carrier. So if you're a Cricut user, then here you go. Here's a great phone for you. Now the device features a 6.3 inch display coming in at 1080p, which is really incredible considering how inexpensive this phone is. Now the PPI is 409, and it features a 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio. So a little bit of a taller display from your typical smartphone, but that's definitely not a bad thing. Having that aspect ratio is really good for watching videos and browsing the web and going on social media. Overall, you're just getting kind of a taller, slimmer form factor, so it makes the device easier to hold while also showing a lot of content. But the display itself is super crisp and clear. It just looks really good. And Umidigi did a great job with implementing a really high quality and great looking panel into this device because this display is super good. So watching videos on this or really doing anything is gonna look great. Now up top here we do have a notch, but I really like the way that this notch was implemented. And you can see it's a teardrop design, and due to that it's not very intrusive at all. So you're able to see all of your notification icons and other things too, like the battery percentage, the 4G LTE badge, and the vibration status. So this is really the best of both worlds in my opinion. It's almost like not having a notch when the notch is this small, but at the same time, we get a really amazing screen to body ratio with the phone. So you can see that the bezels really aren't large at all, maybe a little bit bigger on the bottom than on the sides, but still, overall the design of this phone is super sharp, it looks really modern, and it looks like something that you would expect to buy in 2019. And it's probably one of the best looking phones that I've ever seen at this price tag of $139.99. Now up top here we have a 16 megapixel front facing camera. A little later on in the video I'm going to show you some photo samples coming from it, as well as some video samples too. But overall it performs really well. The device features 64 gigabytes of internal storage, which is really great. That's a lot of storage. I know that there's a lot of phones that are more expensive than this that have half the amount of storage as that, but if 64 gigabytes isn't enough for you, then you can also put a micro SD card into the phone to expand that storage. So you can load this up with movies and pictures and all kinds of good stuff. Now there's no wireless charging on the device, but we do have a fingerprint sensor on the back. So I'll try that out right now and show you how that performs. You can see it's super quick, so that works really well. In addition to that, you can set up Face ID on here too. So there is a security option for everybody. So just pick your favorite and go with it. Now on the back side here, we have a dual camera setup. So we have a 16 and 5 megapixel camera setup here. And you'll see photos and videos from that in a little bit, like I mentioned about the front facing camera. But with it, you can take photos in portrait mode, which is awesome. The device features four gigabytes of RAM, and it has the MediaTek Helio P35 processor. Now, there is kind of a stigma about MediaTek processors, it seems, but let me assure you that the Helio P35 actually is pretty decent, 
and overall, MediaTek has really improved their processors over the last few years. So this is comparable to a Qualcomm 400 series processor like the 450, and pairing that with 4GB of RAM is going to give you good performance. Of course, there are better processors out there from both Qualcomm and MediaTek, but this processor definitely gets the job done. You're going to be able to navigate around the device with no issues. You're going to be able to browse the web and scroll and things are going to be very smooth as well. So don't be concerned at all about the processor. And in fact, the processor here is one of the highlights of the phone. Video recording maxes out at 1080p at 30 frames per second, which is awesome. And of course, the reason why this device is called the Humidigy Power is because of the insane battery capacity on this phone. The Humidigy Power features a 5,150 milliamp hour internal battery, which is massive. That's a bigger battery than what's found on the Moto G7 Power, which is more expensive than this phone by about almost $100. So that's some insane battery life for a phone at this price tag. Now the software here is Android 9 Pi, which is the latest version of Android. And Humidigy really did a good job keeping this stock. There is no bloatware on the phone at all. Of course, I added a few applications when using this, but there is no bloatware and everything performs super well and is really snappy and quick. So the design of the phone is really nice. On the right side here, we have the volume rocker and power button. On the left side, we just have the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. On the top of the phone, we just have the noise canceling microphone. On the bottom, we have the speaker. We have the USB-C port for charging and data transfer. Yes, it does have USB-C at this price. It has a microphone and we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And what's wild too is that even though this device has 5,150 milliamp hours of battery capacity, they still manage to make a really slim and good looking phone. So this is super slim. It feels really good in the hand. It feels really solid too. And this material on the back is really stunning. So this is a polycarbonate material. This is the gold color of the phone. You can also get this in black. So you'll have to make a choice of those two. Now I really hope that eventually they put out a red color. This is the Humidigi F1 Play. I really do hope that Humidigi makes a red color version of the Humidigi Power, but I've heard no rumors of that. So it probably won't happen, but I really do like that red color, that's for sure. But the gold looks super sharp too. On the back side, we have the camera module, we have the flash, we have the fingerprint sensor, Humidigi logo, and that's pretty much it. But this material doesn't absorb fingerprints. It's actually soft to the touch too. And overall, I'm a big fan of it. So I really appreciate this from Humidigi. Now in the box, you do get a case that comes with it. It's kind of a cheap plastic case, but it will kind of hold you over for a little bit until you get your real case for the phone if you choose to go that route. You also get the wall adapter and you also get a USB-C cord in the box as well. But if you want to see my full unboxing video where I go deeper into that, then feel free to do so. So as I mentioned before, I've been using Cricut Wireless with this phone. Phone calls have been really clear with it about on par with your typical budget phone. Maybe not quite as clear as what you'd find with an iPhone, but definitely clear enough that you'll be able to do calls with no problem at all. Let's do a speed test though to see what kind of speeds we're getting with Cricut on the phone. So we're gonna go to the speed test app and getting Cricut set up with this phone was super simple. I literally just took my active Cricut SIM card, put it in the phone and immediately things got going. I didn't have to mess around with any settings or anything like that. No APN settings or anything. I literally just put the SIM card in and I was good to go. So here we go, we have the speed test app right here. Let's tap on go. You can see it's connected to AT&T and Cricut. AT&T owns Cricut if you weren't aware of that. And we'll get this thing going. Now very close to me, like literally outside of my window here, I do have a cell phone tower with 4G. So that's probably where all the signal is coming. So this is probably some of the best signal that I could possibly get with Cricut. And it looks like the speeds we're getting here are pretty typical with Cricut itself. So nothing too crazy. Of course, this is a prepaid carrier and we're getting eight megabits per second down and 7.73 megabits per second up. So pretty good. I mean, that'll work. <laughs> it's definitely usable, that's for sure. And like I said, that has nothing to do with Humidigi because those are the speeds you get with Cricut. Now, if you're a big gamer, you might not wanna go with this phone because the processor can't really handle high performance games. You can get away with playing PUBG, but it's not gonna perform well at all. So if that's something you play often, then you might want to get something a little higher powered, like the Humidigi F1 Play, which I'm going to be comparing to this phone in a separate video. But if you play simple games like Temple Run or Candy Crush, this phone is perfectly fine for that. So we'll do a little demo of Temple Run. So here we go, we have Temple Run, fills up the entire display here. Really brings out that 1080p display with these great colors in the game. 
There we go. Perfect. So yeah, I mean, Temple Run performs really well. No problems with that, that's for sure. And there we go, and I'm gonna jump off. All right, <laughs> so Temple Run is awesome on this phone. Let's go to Instagram. I know that's one of the most popular social networking apps out there. Let's see how that performs on the Umidigi Power. And the good news is it performs really well. We're gonna refresh here, get some fresh content on here. You can see that scrolling is really smooth. So that's really great. You can zoom in on pictures if you want. You know, no problem there. If you wanna look at your stories, you can do that too. So here we go, Metro by T-Mobile, one of my favorite carriers. So that's great. Got some ads. Oh, E for Electric, make sure to subscribe to him. He's awesome. You can see Instagram isn't the quickest. You know, it's a little sluggish, but it works. That's what's important. We'll record a little clip here. Here we go. Hello. <laughs> And I'm not uploading that, that's for sure. I'm gonna turn Wi-Fi on right now and we're gonna go over to YouTube and play some videos. After using it for a week, let's talk about it. Unlocked phones that have come out. So Stefan, what is one of your favorite surprises with Umidigi S3? So YouTube works really well on the phone. The speaker does get really loud, but it can sound a little bit tinny at the full volume. What's great though is that you do have a headphone jack here on the bottom, so if you wanna put in your headphones, you can do that. Of course, you can connect your Bluetooth headphones to this too, so that's another option. But the speakers are good enough. I mean, it's about what you'd expect with a phone in this price range, so I'm not disappointed necessarily. Now overall, I thought the phone did a nice job taking good looking photos that are usable. Of course, with more expensive devices, you can get better cameras, but what's most important is that the photos that the Umidigi Power takes are good looking, like good enough. You might not win any photography awards, but you can share them on social media, you can preserve your memories with no issues at all. So I think overall you'll be pretty happy with the photos that come from this phone, especially compared to other phones in this price range. Now let's check out some test videos and you can decide on your own the quality of that. Hey everyone, this is Kevin here, coming at you with a test video from the rear camera on the Umidigi Power. Let me know what you think of the quality. No autofocus in video mode, at least at the moment. Maybe they'll update the phone in the future to add that. Hey everyone, this is Kevin here doing a video with the Umidigi Power using the front facing camera. Let me know what you think of the quality. It is pretty bright outside today, but overall it looks like the camera can handle the contrast and color. So let me know what you think. So let me know in the comment section below what you think of the video quality from the Umidigi Power. I think it's the job done. It would be nice though to see autofocus in video mode, maybe get that through a software update because currently the Umidigi Power does not have that. So in conclusion, I think this is a really nice device from Umidigi. I think it has a really great looking design. I like this gold color a lot. I really like the material too that it's made out of on the back side. And having that massive 5,150 million power internal battery is another great thing too. I like how the software is really well optimized. It's a stock experience. It's great to see four gigabytes of RAM on here. And the MediaTek Helio P35 is not bad at all. So I definitely recommend getting the Umidigi Power. It's been a pleasure to use and has worked really well for me. The display is just immaculate. It looks so crisp and clear and good looking. So if that's important to you, then you're definitely gonna like the Umidigi Power. Now make sure to check out my other videos on the channel about this device because I did a tips and tricks video, I did a five best and five worst things video as well, and of course there's the unboxing video, and I'm doing a bunch of comparisons between the Umidigi Power 
and other devices from Umidigi and devices from other budget smartphone manufacturers. But let me know what you think of the phone. Do you plan on buying it? And if so, take a look at the link in the video description to see the latest pricing for it. And you can even buy the device over there as well. But make sure to subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and have a great day.